Welcome to the next video tutorial of Open Commissioning. This video is about connecting KUKA Office Light Controller to an Open Commissioning model so we can control the robot and visualize the movement inside the simulation. So what we see here is the KUKA Office Light Controller with a small little program. And here we have the model of the robot in Unity. And when we start the program, we see that the model in Unity is moving. It is receiving values from the controller and visualizing the movement. We also can switch to manual mode. And from there, we can also move the different axes manually. We see the movement is performed inside Unity as well. So let's have a quick overview of how this connection is done and what components are working together here. So if you watched other tutorials for Open Commission, this overview might look a little familiar. This is because the general architecture of connecting third-party systems to the model in open commissioning works in a very similar manner. Basically, we have always the open commissioning assistant with a specific plugin that is receiving data from a specific data source. In this case, this is a KUKA Office Light controller. Then it's creating a global variable list inside TwinCut where the behavior model is running. In TwinCut, this is then mapped to the behavior models and then sent to Unity when the simulation is running. So in this case here, we have the KUKA Office Light controller, which is running a project where the Y200 interface is enabled. Then we have a small application running on the same machine, which is the open commissioning Y200 server, which connects to the controller and to which the plugin of the assistant can connect to. Those two applications are running on the same machine. So in our case, we have a virtual machine where the controller is running and also the um, office light server here. Then we have um, at our host system, the system application where an office light plugin is configured. And from here, as I said, in the TwinCAD project of the model, the GVL is created, which contains all the inputs and outputs and also the access values for the robot. This is then mapped inside the program to the heavier model and then automatically when Unity is running it connects and receives the values and in our case here we are using the access values to visualize the movement of the robot. We see the values of the axis in the robot component and if they change they change the respective axis. So let's start modeling this from scratch. So what you need is KUKA Office Light Controller with project. This can include a little program, but you can also do it without a program and then just manually move the axis. This is also okay. And you need to enable the Y200 interface so we can connect our little server application to connect to the plugin. Next, you need to have the assistant application installed in your system. To install it, you can just head to the, to the assistant's GitHub repository, go to releases, download the latest release, then unzip it, and there you get the application on your system. So you can start the application. Next, we need to install the Office Lite plugin for the assistant. So to do this, head over to the plugin's GitHub repository. Also, go to the latest release. And from there, you can download the plugin and also Y200 server application. OK, so I downloaded them and put it in the same directory as the assistant application is in. And from there, I just need to unpack it and then the assistant can detect it and use the plugin. The Office Lite server zip 
I need to copy to the machine where the office flight controller is running. In this case, this is this virtual machine here. So I just copy it here, unpack it, and I have it available here. This is just one executable, and I start it, and I see because the controller is already running with the interface enabled, it is connecting to it and now listening for connections of the assistant. Okay, so to recap, we have the Office Light Controller, we have the server running, we installed the assistant and the plugin, and now we are ready to start modeling the robot. Let's begin by creating the TwinCAD project that will contain the behavior model and the global variable list for the Office Lite instance. So for this, of course, you need to have TwinCAD installed and also the Open Commissioning TwinCAD library. You can download the library from the repository and install it within TwinCAD. So to create the project, we are using the assistant application. So let's start it and click Create a new TwinCAD solution. So you need to specify a path and a name. And now the assistant is creating and opening a solution. OK, so the solution is created and opened. So now let's load in the plugin to connect to the Office Lite controller. So we hit the plus button here. Let's call it. Okay. Robot type is Office Light. Autostat means that the plugin automatically starts and stops with TwinCAD. So we keep this checked. And the IP address has to be the IP address of the machine where the Office Light controller and the Y200 server is running. So in our case, this is, is this one, and the port is the default one, 1000. Let's click Apply. Let's save it. And we see that the assistant automatically created the global variable list for this plugin, where the inputs and outputs will be available when TwinCut is running. So let's activate the configuration and bring TwinCut and restart the system in run mode. We see here in the assistant that that it is connected to the Y200 server. And when we look in and see inside the inputs and outputs, we see, for example, we re are receiving the access values of the Office Lite controller. So those are exactly the same ones um, we are we are having here. So the first axis is to this value and so on. And when we change them, so I manually jog here in the panel, we see that the values are changing here as well. So connection is established. We are receiving values from the controller inside. So so the next step would be to map the values from the GVL to the behavior model of the robot. But first, we have to create the behavior model. And this is done by modeling it in Unity and then automatically creating it using the assistant again. OK, so let's go to Unity, where we have the cable. And I already structured it in a certain way so that the hierarchy of the game objects mirror the kinematic chain of the robot. So we have different objects called point, which are at the exact same position as the rotation axis of the robots would be. So the first one, this here, and we see when we, the second one is this, and when we rotate, we see that the following game objects are rotating as well, mirroring the 
kinematic chain of the robot. So, so right now, this is only geometry and CAD data. So we need to add the specific components for modeling the robot. So at the root object called KUKA robot, we will add the component called robot 6R, which is a component of open commissioning, can model these robots. So, in, so inside the inspector, we have to reference um, the rotation axis of the robots. First, we have to specify the numbers. So in this case, we have six axes. And here we can drag the axis components. So those aren't modeled yet, so we have to add them next. As I said, every game object called joint corresponds to a rotation axis. So we can add axis component to every game object the joints. So let's select them all. Add the axis component. We have to change the direction. So in this case, the rotation axis for every joint is the y direction, and the type is of course a rotation axis. Okay, so now at every joint we added the axis component. Now we can reference them the robot component. So let's drag and drop the axis references inside the component, the inspector. The last thing we need to configure here is specify a factor for every axis, which can be used to model gearboxes or switch the axis around. But in our case, we just want the axis values to directly go to the axis in the simulation. So we set the factor for every axis too. Okay, so now the robot component is configured completely. So to automatically create the behavior model for this component, we have to add in the project ob object here, which has the component as a child. We have to add the client component to specify a port, which is in this case A51, which means that it will connect to the PLC project inside TwinCAD. So to create the behavior model, we first have to restart the TwinCAD system in config mode. And then click update TwinCAD inside client component. You see the project tree was sent to the assistant, which updated the project, which instantiated the behavior model in the program. So we see here Kuka robot type FB robot. This corresponds to this component here has been created. Okay, so we are nearly done. The only thing we have to do now is map the relevant values of the global variable list to the behavior model of the robot. We do this by calling a specific function of the robot's behavior model in the init run of the main program, which is called connect joints. So this takes two arguments. which are the access values in the GVL and the number of joints. In this case, we have six, and this is the GVL of the KUKA robot. Okay, so this is now mapped. Let's activate the configuration. And start Unity in play mode. We see that we are receiving the access values. The robot looks a little wrong. In this case, we have to um, specify some offsets. This is 90 degrees at the second axis and minus 90 degrees at the third axis. And now the robot looks correct. Now, when we go into the slide controller, 
and jog the axis, we see that the axes are moving also in the simulation. So we are receiving correct values. And we can confirm that everything is mapped correctly. Okay, so that's basically it. We hope that you get some value out of this. You can try this out for yourself and let us know how it works for you. Thank you very much. See you next time.